Today we're going to be taking a look at this AC6000 Bluetooth Acetech chronograph. The main purpose I'll be using this chronograph is for gel blasters, but you can also use it for airsoft, paintball, um, regular ballistics too. It will pick, pick up very high speeds, but you just need to be careful because it's a small hole in there to not uh, miss the hole. So, and if you're firing with a, <clears throat> a real firearm, it probably won't work that well because the flash from your, uh, from your muzzle might do some damage since you have to be so close. So it's better suited for um, non-firearms projectiles. So it comes with, a, it looks like a pretty large manual, user manual. It's different, there's several different languages in here. So the individual languages um, might not be that big and we'll see how easy it is to uh, read and if it's uh, well written or not. So it arrives bubble wrapped. It's a pretty big unit, bigger than I expected. It says, please remove this foil firstly and recharge for at least four hours before first use. Please avoid placing the muzzle inside the velocity test tube. So it uses an 18650 battery, which is a good common size to have to replace and it's not an internal battery that you can't replace so that's nice. It has a little plastic tab here and I suspect it comes with plenty of charge to at least power on. Oh no, it said, did it say low battery or what? Low battery. Fortunately I have some other 18650s that I can swap out. This 18650 battery actually has a uh, protection so it's a little bit longer, but it still fits. So a battery with, that has an onboard protection will still fit in here. And there we go, this powers up now. So apparently the, um, the power button is also the enter button. And that's what this down and to the left arrow means. It means enter or return. So that powers it on. And then when you're going around through the menu, then you would use that enter button to, to go into something like, it's not just like clicking the center of this button. Just by pushing over to the right, you're not gonna go into here. So you press the power button and it acts as enter button also. And the only other thing in the box is the USB power cord and it's a uh, regular USB to micro USB. I kind of wish it start switching stuff over to USB-C because I'm having, I'm getting some more of those. This translucent foil is a must have one for gel blaster. AG GBB airsoft gun will not need it. So there's a translucent foil that you place inside to protect it from spray or water from the, from the blasting from the gels. So gel blasters often spray out some water there's some moisture sometimes if a gel ball gets smashed on the way out it might spray it and it'll get in there and might do some damage to the electronics so you place a piece of translucent foil inside of here so i'm gonna have to do that and that's this right here Make the joint of the translucent foil face upwards to the logo of the device, like this, because there's no sensor up there. Now 
There we go. So now we have some protection inside there. There's a screw in the bottom of the chronograph to mount to a tripod. It uses a quarter 20 screw standard. But the problem is that, I guess when it was molded, the plastic crept up into the screw thread. So I'm going to have to clean that out. Luckily, I've got taps and stuff like that. And maybe I can get in there with a little file or a little screwdriver and clean that out. That's something Ace Tech needs to be careful of during manufacturing. I ended up having to use a quarter 20 tap to chase the threads to remove the plastic because I couldn't get it to pick out with a sharp file or anything. Couldn't get that plastic out. But this worked. The Ace Tech app is super nice. As soon as you link the Bluetooth to your phone, it'll show up in the Ace Tech app. When you open the app, this is the first page you arrive to, which is a device, you select your device, and whatever was already in memory on the Ace Tech will show up here. So it synchronizes automatically with what was in the memory. And what's really nice is you have a, uh, a graphical view too of it, so you can look at the graphical view and you can see your um, RPS, the rate per second, up at the top the graph, and you can actually zoom in and get a closer look at that. You can click on the individual points and see like 13.1, 13.1, 13, 12.8. So you can you can do a lot in, in, this, in these graphs and just see what the data is. And then down below we have the FPS, feet per second. And again, you can zoom in, take a closer look at this, more detailed. What I, something I wish you could do was to delete points. Like if you have a point which is obviously out of whack, like maybe um, in this case, I think these are all okay, but sometimes it'll be like 400 FPS or something like that. You, I wish you could like select that point and just delete that point, but there's no way to do that. I don't think you can, it just wants to clear, hitting delete down here just wants to clear all the data. So, there's no way to just delete a point because that can throw off, like you can have a nice graph and you can have one data point that's either high or low and throw off your whole graph. But just for general reference use, this is great. Uh, it's only for like, um, if I was gonna use the data for a video or information, it would be nice to be able to grab a screenshot of this and, and have that incorrect data removed from it. So here at the top, we have some uh, menu buttons RPS, you can change between, R, so you can hit that and you can go to RPM and RPS, so you switch between those two. Uh, feet per second, meters per second, those are the two options. Joule, foot pounds, joule per centimeter squared, and joule. Here, the ammo, you can set your uh, different, you can have some presets for different ammo sizes. So I'm just using ammo one, and then it shows you like a max average, minimum. You can go in here and change your ammo settings. So here you have all the presets for your ammo. So you can have up to five presets for the, for the different types of ammo. It would be good if you could name them, but it's just ammo one, ammo two, ammo three, but you can't name them. Uh, you can upgrade your firmware. You can reset everything to default and it shows you the firmware version. So one thing you can do is once you've gotten some data is you can save it and then you can enter a name, just put test, and then you can go to records and you will see your data here. So you can, you can bring this data back up and view it. If you want to go back to your data that uh, you were working on, you go back to device and then it pulls up this data again, the same data you were on. So if you want to clear this data because you want to get a new data set, you hit this uh, sweeper tool down here and clear data and that clears the data and then I'm going to try to uh, do a few shots and you'll see it's going to pop up as soon as I start um, shooting the blaster. There we go so the data pops up right right away. comes on the screen. If you want to do some more shots.
Basically, as soon as you start shooting, it's on there. So here's an example of some data points I'd like to be able to delete. I'd like to be able to just delete these data points. This is probably from some splatter or something that's uh, bouncing around in there. I'm definitely uh, making a lot of splatter inside that tube and it's going to have to be cleaned out. The app also has a shop. Uh, probably not going to use any of that feature. And then you have some calculators here for your energy and velocity. So you can do some quick calculations if you need to. Uh, and that's about it for the app. Uh, it works for what you need it to. It works, pretty, it works pretty well. The only thing, like I said, it would be nice would be to be able to edit data points and delete them.